Let's go over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do each and every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D dash oracle.com that's odd dash oracle.com tim Ord, what's going on brother well i guess you got my charts yes sir i do um all right uh this kind of a repeat but we can kind of go over chart one real quick okay i have it and, yep and okay the, the bottom window we talked about this probably i don't know three four or five weeks ago and that bottom window is the um 50-day average of the up-down volume percent. Yes. And we, we talked about, well, when this indicator gets below minus 20, normally the market flips sideways. And it flips sideways, you know, uh, last three times uh, was six months. Then it went sideways for about four months, made minor new lows. Okay. In the current time. In the current time frame, we went sideways two months because we got that signal right at like July 1st or something. Anyhow, it kind of went sideways. And usually you kind of touch a new low, but nothing real significant. Then once this indicator closes above 50, uh, which is all that blue area I see uh, that. on the chart, that's when the rally starts. And uh, I did this this morning, and we're at plus 98 or so, almost one, plus one. Anyhow, it's above zero. And this is a longer-term chart since it's a 50-day average. And the ones we, last time we, on Tuesday, we showed the 18-day average. And it was, you know, uh, both of them closed above, or uh, the up-down volume closed above minus 10 on that indicator. This one needs to get above zero. This uh, one, so, okay. Anyhow, and where, where are we right now, Tim? Uh, we're plus one. So, uh, so the 50-day uh, needs to be above zero. And above so zero we're at plus one, so this is you know, generating a signal right now. Oh, right, that's what I uh, thought. Okay, I guess that, that's that's my point. That's what I was. I was, thinking, I was looking at it in the blue. I said, okay, it looks to me like it, it actually hit. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, let me yeah. ask you this: so, when it, when it when it hits there, right, is that saying that you're at the beginning of the rally versus the consolidation? Maybe. Yeah. Was, okay. Uh, um, if you go look at the last signal, you know, the last signal of July of last year. Yes. We got down below minus 20. Right. And in, in October, it finally got above zero. And that's, you know, maybe late September. And so it rallied all the way into first part of uh, this year. Then, uh, you know, went down below zero and stuff. So one of these, these signals usually last, you know, uh, the one back in 2000, I don't looks like about 20 or something, way, way to the left of the chart. You know, that signal lasts a long time. It just kept going up and up. And even with the uh, March of 2000 COVID crash, it actually stayed on a bullish signal. Even though the market kind of crashed, it was kind of a, a big hiccup. And it came right back and went up to new highs. So right. what I'm saying here, we probably, this is probably a multi-month type signal. Right. Uh, so because uh, you know what's so intriguing on this one, Tim, is that you know when you actually look at you know the the gold contract, I mean we we've hardly done a retracement at all, you know since going back you know in the middle of April. I mean you know compared to what we have done going all the way back to you know 2020. You know what I'm saying? It's like we had that nice run you know prior to 2020, and then you know. That consolidation always had deep retracements, and this one hasn't had a deep retracement at all. Even, yeah, you know, yeah, you're right about that. And actually, I've, I've got some other signals that I actually I got a. Uh, now we'll, we'll show it on the show, but not this yep. time around. Cause I don't, uh, That's but cool. Anyhow, I got a, a bunch of type longer term signals that were triggered last July August, and so, and even though the market has actually moved up from you know the lows of last. Uh, July, August. Oh yeah, because that's where that four months is, you know, and made right. higher highs and right. Uh, so this is a little shorter term signals, but the longer term signals are bullish. So um, let's, let's flip to chart number two. I was, okay. The reason why I'm, I'm kind of putting this out is something I think is pretty intriguing here. This is a, a monthly chart, and uh, the bottom one I want to point out. Uh, this is a monthly chart of the up-down volume percent. It's not a 50-day average. It's a monthly chart. So this really looks at the bigger time frames and what's going on. Yes. And um, 
what I want to point out, I got that shaded pink area there. Yes. Um, kind of up-down volume is kind of like an advanced decline. You know, if you got uh, zero advances and everything's declined, it really can't go lower. Right. That's same with volume. You got, you got, you know, no down volume at all, and only up volume would it, be registered, you know, extremely high, infinite. And same thing with you got all down volume, you can only go so low because you run out of shares being traded. So it's kind of like a, uh, it would really be hard to get below the 2016 low. Yes. That was a major low uh, off of a, of a major high. And it went back there and tested in 2019. And in currently, we're at the, the, the 2016 low now for the up-down volume indicator. Okay. So something, uh, what I'm saying here, something is ex- extremely sold out. It's, it's, you know, when it's the worst of the worst, it's usually the best of the best. Yes. Uh, especially with the market. When everybody just hates it so much. Right. You got a sold out market and you got basically all the sellers that were already sold. Yeah. And they don't pay attention to the market, right? I mean, that's how it goes, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Remember that one chart I showed you on bullish percent index? Yes. Every time it got below uh, five, another five percent of the market was on bicycles. That was a major bottom. Right. Uh, It happened the same way as top with the bullish percent index because it was up 95 percent. You know, it's hard to get any better than that, and that's usually a top. Well, it kind of works with up, down, volume percent, too. Yeah, just so, stay right there. Yeah, here, just, yeah, stay here. Stay right there one just second. Stay. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. Don't forget, folks, you can hold of Tim at odd-oracle.com. We have the Dow down 124, Nasdaq's up 52, S&P's a flat. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks, to Dow. Dow Industrials right now are trading down 120. We've got the Nasdaq uh, up 57. S&P's are flat. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. We are talking markets right now. We're actually talking the gold market. Okay, Tim, we're ready. All right. So, anyhow, is what I'm thinking on this, uh, this is still chart number two. Yes. That base that's building 2016, what I'm saying is the up-down volume, a cumulative up-down volume, really can't get any worse than what it is right now. And that's, you know, that 2016 low was, was uh, you know, just an ugly low. And actually 2019 was low. This one is just as ugly. And and so I'm thinking this whole thing is a big base. Uh, you know, it's just building a base uh, for the, the next rally. I don't think this up-down volume can get any worse than where it is right now. Uh, we're minus uh, 5500 on that chart. And... Historically, that's pretty low. So uh, that's that's my point. It hasn't turned up yet, right? Um, but this is on a monthly time. We got you know we got some other indicators that have turned up. So this will probably we start responding um, next month in September. We'll probably start to respond. But it's kind of a lagging indicator. I've, I've when it crosses the um, mid Bollinger Band, that's where all those uh, lines, that blue lines, red lines. Are signaled, and we had a kind of a cross back in in uh, mid 2022, probably around that July period. Went above it and kind of closed below it again. Um, so, but anyhow, this this I think will turn up because we got a lot of the ind- indicators are turn up, and when they do turn up, it's usually a multi-year uh, rally because you look at all those lines. You know, you got you know most of them are about two years apart. Yes. So. I'm thinking this could rally into 2024, maybe 2025. Yeah, just, you, you know that's what history shows. Yeah, you know what's interesting, Tim, is that I did a, uh, a workshop for the gold subscribers last night, right? And when I was going uh-huh. through them, the the gold contract itself, right, versus the equities. You know, the gold contract itself, even going back ten years, the most it did was I, uh, you know, a a 50% retracement on a five-year, a 0.382 retracement on a, you know, a 10-year, a, a right? And then uh-huh. the, the equities, however, did do, you know, a deep retracement, you know? I mean, yeah. when, you know, because of, the, you know, it, it has to do with that March low, but, you know, so that I found that really intriguing. I'm saying to myself, well, this is interesting. And then silver, like when I'm looking at silver, silver, you know, basically seems to be stronger than gold right now, but on a longer-term chart, if we just take the retracement value, right, it is mm-hmm. not. <laughs> so it's like, okay, this is going to get, you know, we know that, 
you know, the metal market in general is always challenging, but I, I'm, I, I was like, it was a heads up. It was like, okay, we'll, we'll see what this, how, how this is going to shake out, you know? you know? Right. Well, the XAU gold ratio is kind of what you're talking about. I don't, you know, yes. that's just cashed yes. uh, to an equity. And right. I do quite a few studies with that too. And, and that thing has been, uh, hasn't gone anywhere to, and I think it was 2014. It's just been basing in a small right. uh, pattern. So I'm, I'm kind of watching for that to turn up. Yeah. And, um, um, actually the next show we'll do next Tuesday, I'll, I'll bring, I'll, I'll bring that chart and we can talk about it. Well, you know so, what I was thinking? So listen to this. This, this gets intriguing folks. Okay. So, and, and the gold and silver, you know, mining business, right? Mexico has always been one of the great jurisdictions to do business in, right? Well, they put a mm -hmm. law through last year, Tim, right? Approximately only eight months ago right now. And what has happened is that that law is pretty intense because the taxing structure has gone up dramatically and go up a lot more. And so what has happened is that equities Mexican, that are doing a lot of business in Mexico, they haven't moved. So it's really intriguing. It's like, okay, man, you know, because we know that, you know, inside the XAU, the HRI, of course, you're going to have, you know, equities that do business in Mexico. So it's like, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. But I thought that was really intriguing, like, you know, because like when you take a look at Mag Silver, Mag Silver was one of the strongest, you know, silver stocks out there. And they're really, they're, that stock's in trouble. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not only, really, it, it, the thing that's crazy is that they went from, in 2021, you know, they were an exploration stock. They went from doing no business to 215 million to doing 428 million, and the stock can't move. <laughs> you know, so uh -huh. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there in the context of that could be one of the reasons that you know the GDX, the XAU, you know, people are leery now of you know the whole Mexican deal. Do you know what I mean? So you're dealing with you know United States, Canada. Australia, those are still great mining communities where the equities do business there. You know, because you, you, do you remember, you know, the first run, Tim, that we had? If you remember in 2011, what happened, folks, is this. And I have never thought this would be happening in the United States, but it did happen. When we went from 2001, 2002, that's when we had BGO with like 10 cents and 20 cents and CDE and all right. that, right? Yeah. What happened, yeah. folks, in 2011... That was almost at the high. 2010, it started happening. Our congressmen and senators start saying in Congress that, hey, man, we got to start charging, you know, all these taxes in Nevada. And it was like, this came out of nowhere. So it's always intriguing. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, you know, you get the gist of it. It's like things can change pretty quick. But Right. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, you know, they're, they're pushing all this uh, battery stuff out, which is basically all made up of uh, precious metals. Yes. And, you know, we're buying all that stuff from, you know, our enemies, you know, or people that don't like it. Right. So I'm curious, you know, how this is all going to swing around because, you know, we got a lot of those, a lot of that stuff right here in the United States. But, you know, uh, so we'll have to wait and see if kind of a political winds, you know, may change. It yes. never remain the same for all the time. No, I'm with but you. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking what's going on right now, all these political winds or winds are going to uh, change. And that's the reason why all these charts are, are you know, especially these longer term charts are going, uh, showing some bullish signs. So, right. Um, right. It could be back to 2000 again. I don't know. Um, it's due, you know, it's 20 years ago. You know, there's a lot of big cycles, 20-year cycles, so let's we'll see what that happens or not. Nice. Yep. So, Absolutely. Time will tell. Time will tell. we we, we got to do one more chart real quick. Okay. Uh, uh, chart three. I'm there. And, uh, yep. Uh, th this is just a weekly chart of the XAU, or no, it's a monthly chart of the XAU going back to, uh, uh, looks like about 2016. It's just a big uh, channel going up, and you had a couple of shakeouts, and we're bottom of that channel. And so I'm thinking we're going to go back up to top of that channel, and uh, that you know we talked before on on your show that we think uh, there's a possibility that XAU could get around to 180 yes. because of some other charts. Yeah. And this is kind of a supporting chart here. We kind of build a base. Really haven't gone anywhere for most of a year now, and so we're either going to break down, which according 
a lot of charts I have, we're not going to break down. We're going to break up. Right. And the next logical tar target is back to the top of that channel. Yes. So I'm thinking that's where that 180 uh, or higher may may be reached. No, so I, I can see that. Went. It, just sure. just stay there, Tim. Uh, Tim Lloyd, Tom O'Brien, folks. We do appreciate your crowd on a problem with us. We're going to be coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 136. NASDAQ is off 52. S&Ps are down one and a half. I want to say hi to Bill. Bill, what's going on? Bridget, what's going on? Love you guys. <laughs> Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim uh, Ord, Tom O'Brien. Uh, don't forget, folks, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 116. NASDAQ's up 61. S&Ps are up one. And we're looking at the uh, XAU monthly chart, Tim. Yeah, uh, anyhow, that's all I wanted to say about that. It's okay. Just, uh, um, we, we can go on to the S&Ps now if you want. Yes, please. Yep, there we go. All right, uh, uh, okay, the, the first uh, chart four is just a daily chart, and um, I don't know what today. Right now, we're up five days in a row. When I did this chart, we're up four days in a row. You know, if you're up four days in a row, the market's higher seventy three percent of the time within five days. I see. If you're up five days in a row, that jumps up to eighty three percent higher within five days. Wow. So, um, so you, so even though we're testing that previous high of May second. I got a red line drawn there. Yes, that that May second high had, uh, uh, I think, it was ninety three million shares or ninety four million shares. Yep, ninety two point so one. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. So we're testing that high, but most likely on lighter volume. But since you're up uh, uh, four days in a row at least, there's a good chance we're probably going to get to that gap area, which is that pink area. Yeah. And uh, that's the potentially where that signal uh, potential sell signal may gen uh, generate also the the week of um the next week is labor day and the week up is the, the week up before labor day is up and the volume is like going into friday a lot of times labor day week week which is next week is a down week i see uh, so okay. I'm, so i'm kind of looking for a, a signal here but there's a good chance i don't know what today is going to do yet but if we don't hit a high, uh, if we're up five days in a row, most likely that gap area is going to be tested. If not, it's going to be tested, uh, you know, probably not this week, but probably next week. So Monday or Tuesday is probably going to be up. Or Monday is a holiday. Uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday be up, and then the last several days might be down week next, you know, late next week. And I'm thinking nothing real significant. But at one point, I thought we may go all the way down and maybe test the lows. I don't think that'll be the case. I think we'll find support where that blue line is, which is basically the previous highs of that bearish engulfing pattern. And I think we may find support there. Okay, so, hold on. Let me look at that one. Of, the bearish? Yeah, it's that, yeah, it's 444 area on the SPYs. Oh, I see it. Is, I see it. Yep, okay, okay. Yep. Yeah, which is kind of the So the that's going to be a really small we, consolidation. We yeah, I got it. Um, okay, yep. So as I'm thinking that's what's going to go on. Then, then from there, I don't know. The whole thing's kind of just garbage. Uh, yes, it's, it's it's kind of a because I don't think we're going to break out to the upside. I, I think um, actually go to chart five real quick. Okay. And this this is a reason why I don't think we're going to keep breaking up. There's a this is a, the bottom window is a six three day average of the trend. Yes, and if you get around one get around one or lower, usually. You know, there's always exception to the case. There's one time in, in 2021 uh, or 2020, I think, you, you got there. But normally when you get this low on the 60-day trend, it's at least a, a high period, if not at least a consolidation. And so I, I, I put those times for the, uh, the pink areas and red lines. And we've kind of been there over the last uh, – since uh, – July, we've been hanging around this point one or lower on a six three day trend, and so we're you know we're, we're having difficulty here trying to keep going. What we need to do is get that six day trend up around one point one, and that's where an impulse wave can get going. So okay, that's why I'm thinking we're probably going to move sideways probably all the way into October, and uh, I think the worst still may come. 
because uh, I think 4,200 on the SBY is still possible. So we'll kind of see, but that's yeah. a bigger trend. So if you flip back to chart number four again, yes, that's the reason why I don't think this rally is going to just continue. I think it's going to fade out. Um, it's certainly going to be interesting because it's amazing that, <laughs> you know, like where just about at all time high still and we're talking about going into september 1st right <laughs> yeah yeah the, the market's strong i mean yeah uh, uh I'm, I'm thinking we got garbage maybe for another month month and a half right but after that i'm I'm thinking um you know we're starting to build a base we'll probably you will get back into that blue area i got shaded there that's where all the the trend and tick readings Yes. Uh, got blow out. Well, at least we'll get back into that area. Maybe we'll break a little bit below it. And But we need the trend and ticks to really get negative again to get enough energy going to build, you know, build a base to get to throw the market higher. And right now, you know, with a 60 day trend just setting at one, which is kind of neutral but bearish on the bigger time frames, you just don't have the, the fear to drive the market higher. Remember Joe Granville, you know, oh, he yeah. said, you know, the uh, market cl uh, climbs a wall of worry. That was his words. That's right. The generals and, and the you know the generals leave first, and then the you know the privates or whatever too. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. The yeah, soldiers and stuff. Soldiers. So, thank. Yeah. So anyhow, that's that's so. You know, I can see need, that. that need, that's we intriguing. Need, we need fear in the market here, and we really don't have it yet. So. Right. And so what you're saying, which is pretty cool, is that you have to get some fear in the market even to get higher. That's that's the reality, and I can see that. They sell, yeah, you that's know. exactly what the deal. Yeah. And so, and so, you know, we're down. We're sitting here for two months with the 60-day trends, you know, setting near bearish levels. We don't have the power to break above the highs other than, you know, we may touch those highs. Right. But that'd be the most you're going to get. Right. So... Wow. So uh, it's 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 a trading range. So it's uh, I'm kind of looking for a sell signal here, but nothing significant. I think the big sell signal, you know, is coming probably in October. Yeah, I think you get a, a decent sell signal that that minimum go back down. And and if you look the last low we had back in August, yes, that that low was on high volume. Yep, ninety eight so million. Most right. high volume lows are tested. Right. So. 98 million is lame. Well, listen, man, yeah, it's, a, it's always a pleasure. You have a, a great holiday weekend. Kind of cool that we're going into, you know, Labor Day, right? No doubt. I mean, yeah. you talk about a fast summer, right, man? Holy cow. Yeah, it, it really went fast. It did. So, so what, yeah. like, what type of weather do you get coming into the fall, Tim? Well, actually, it's, it's usually really nice here. You know, today is probably going to be about maybe eighty-five at most. Nice. Uh, all week's been really nice, but Nick, this weekend it gets kind of it gets up to like ninety-five. Which okay. Kind of unusual for this time of year. Yeah. But normally, as you get September, you know, you start. You know, eighties are kind of the highs, and evenings gets in the sixties, and then that, uh, in November or October, you know, you you get to starting to stay in the sixties instead of maybe seventies. So it's that's it's, good it's though. You get a nice fall. Weather. Yeah, you and get a nice fall. Over the winter, you freeze your ass off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's when you're gonna have to come visit us in Florida. But that, that's yeah. that's that's good I'm weather. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah totally, man. So. Well, listen, so. don't forget, folks, you can get hold of Tim every trading day at ord o r d dash oracle dot com. That's ord dash oracle dot com. Uh, Tim, we always appreciate the education, man. You have a great weekend, safe weekend, and uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you as soon as we get back from the Labor Day weekend on Tuesday. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.